Talk about going out with a bang. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 final episodes in British TV shows. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at final episodes from the original runs of popular TV series. The Britons on guard! Happy or sad, these closing chapters left viewers with something satisfying, meaningful and memorable to look back on. Number 10, The Camping Trip, The Inbetweeners. This award-winning sitcom about teenage angst, awkwardness and embarrassment ended on a definite high. Oh, that's alright then. Well done! When Simon learns he's moving to Swansea, he and his friends celebrate by going camping. Unsurprisingly, things don't go to plan, with the trip marred by an STD, a bout of food poisoning, and an unfortunate end to Simon's famous car. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! An episode stacked with memorable one-liners and razor-sharp writing, it ends the coming-of-age chaos with a hefty helping of the show's distinctive crude humour. Great! Number 9. Things Aren't Simple Anymore, One Foot in the Grave this 90s fan favourite follows the mishaps of the perpetually bad-tempered Victor Meldrew as he sets about annoying and being annoyed by anything and everything. So, for the show's finale, Meldrew dies in a hit-and-run accident. And while unceremoniously killing the main character might seem like a poor way to end a comedy, viewers generally gave the episode the thumbs up, with UK TV Gold describing it as a subtly downbeat end to an equally downbeat man. I am so sorry. Such was Meldrew's popularity, however, fans marked his passing by leaving flowers at the location of his on screen death. We don't believe it. Number 8, Season 3, Episode 6, Gavin and Stacey. Because Stacey's away, then Matt's going to play. What are you doing? I don't know. Actually, let's not bother. James Corden once revealed that he and Ruth Jones cried when they finished writing the script to this sitcom's finale. You can't blame them, really, because it all kicks off. Stacey reveals she's pregnant at last, and we finally get a resolution to Nessa and Smithy's will-they-won't-they they relationship, as Smithy interrupts Nessa and Dave's wedding. Is there something you wanted to say? Yeah. No. That moment when Smithy bears his soul while holding his son in his arms is one of the emotional highlights of the show, with critics praising its warmth, honesty, and humour. You should do it because you love him. But I don't think you do. Number 7, Season 10, Episode 6, Spooks. The epic finale to this spy drama was hailed by critics as brilliant and a tour de force. The episode features its usual mix of thrilling action and tense interrogations, as Section D tries to prevent a terrorist attack by a Russian nationalist. But the final instalment's true success lies in its character moments, in particular the shocking conclusion to the Harry and Ruth storyline. There's even time for a cameo from Matthew McFadden's Tom Quinn, arguably the best, or at least most loved, character from any of the 10 series of the show. Number 6, The Remorseful Day, Inspector Morse. We Brits love our brilliant, if grumpy, detective types, so we were tempted to include the on-screen end for David Jason's Jack Frost. Goodbye, George. But instead, we've gone for the crossword loving Inspector Morse's swan song, as he revisits an unsolved case following the receipt of an anonymous letter. But the seriously ill Inspector knows his days are numbered, and the strongest scene of this episode comes as he contemplates his own mortality with Lewis. It's about important things life and death, regret. It also serves as a worthy tribute to the Morse actor John Thor, who himself passed away just over a year later. Goodbye, Tim. Number 5, Season 3, Episode 8, Ashes to Ashes. The much-anticipated conclusion to this crime drama packed more revelations into one episode than most shows manage in an entire series. Are you armed, bastards? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Right, gentlemen. Saddle up. Most notably, we learn that the Ashes world is a sort of purgatory, and that DCI Gene Hunt is a guardian to trouble dead cops as he helps them achieve redemption. 
With excellent acting and impeccable pacing, the emotional hits keep coming as Gene first bids goodbye to his colleagues, then heads back to the office to welcome the next lost soul to his team. A word in your shell like pal. Number four, time on our hands, only fools and horses. Ignoring the underwhelming revival in 2001 and focusing on the original end to the classic sitcom, this episode had it all, from the awkward comedy of Del Boy meeting his in-laws to the touching moment when he helps Rodney deal with a heartbreaking loss. You just... You shield yourself from it, you know? But the crowning moment comes when a pocket watch in the Trotter's garage proves to be worth rather more than the Wheeler Dealer brothers had expected. I'd like to start the bidding at £150,000. <laughs> For a truly feel-good ending, these iconic characters walk off into a cartoon sunset, finally as millionaires. Come on, Rodney, this is our big chance. Hey, he who dares wins. This time next year, we could be billionaires. <laughs> Number three, season two, episode eight, Life on Mars. In this police drama with a twist, 21st century copper Sam wakes up in the 1970s after a car accident. Not knowing whether he's dreaming or in a coma, he spends two series wanting to return to his old life. I have to destroy Gene Hunt. And then I can come home. Yet when he finally does, he realises he misses what he left behind. I woke up in that place. And I told myself... I'm alive. And I was. So he takes drastic steps to return to Annie, Gene, and his other friends back in the 70s. It isn't often an episode leaves you feeling sort of positive about a character's suicide, but this show somehow achieves the impossible. Got it, that channel. Number two, Christmas special part two, The Office. The ending to this mockumentary sitcom won almost universal acclaim from viewers and critics, as the Wernham Hot Christmas Party offers a number of standout moments. I don't know what to expect, to be honest. I haven't been impressed so far. First, David Brent opens up about his failings to blind date Carol, suggesting he is finally learning some self-awareness. Then he gets around to putting Finch in his place, after Finch's spiteful joke at Carol's expense. Chris, <laughs> why don't you f*** off? But best of all, the Tim and Dawn storyline finally rounds off, with the couple finally giving us the kiss we've been waiting for since the very first episode. Careful, she's got kills. Um, not anymore. Number one, goodbye, Blackadder goes forth. It had to be, didn't it? The finale to this World War I trench sitcom is not just one of the best TV endings, but one of the greatest TV moments of all time. The episode begins with typically black humour, as Blackadder tries to get himself sent home on insanity grounds. What is your name? Wibble. <laughs> what is two plus two? Oh, wibble, wibble. When that fails, though, the jokes dry up as he is forced to lead his men over the top. And not even one of Baldrick's plans can prevent the inevitable. Well, I'm afraid it'll have to wait. Whatever it was, I'm sure it was better than my plan to get out of this by pretending to be mad. I mean, who would have noticed another madman around here? Ultimately, it's a poignant and devastating tribute to the tragedy of the Great War, leaving the viewer with a true sense of sadness and loss. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.